Hey everyone, it's Corey McCarthy and thank you for tuning in. In my recent video on the topic of incels, I had male viewers ask me if I knew about the 80-20 rule. The 80-20 rule is also known as the Pareto Principle, which states that roughly 80% of effects come from 20% of causes. Two examples would include, approximately 80% of land is owned by 20% of a given population, or 80% of sales comes from 20% of clients. In the case of relationships and sex, 80% of women desire to mate with the top 20% of men, inevitably leaving the remaining bottom 80% of men in some degree of shit out of luck. So this raises the question of what then qualifies a man for the top 20%. Now a humble man might prefer not to categorize himself, but might also be surprised where he actually scores when presented with the data. And that dose of perspective could serve as a sudden boost in confidence uh, for said man, uh, thus improving his career, social, romantic, and sexual outcomes. Enter the point of this video. In September of 2017, I released a video that discussed the traits that women desire in a man. It was very detailed and entirely backed by research, which is my signature approach. If I had to choose two standout qualities from that video that would arguably place a given man among the top 20% of men, they would be one, having resources such as money or the ability to acquire resources. Two, physical attractiveness, including attention to hygiene, muscularity at the level of, say, Brad Pitt in the movie Troy, uh, which is what women rated highly in more than one study, even compared to the classic bodybuilders like Frank Zane, complete with a V-shaped physique and 12% body fat. The latter was actually shown in research by the Royal Society to be most attractive to fertile women specifically. It is worth noting that those are areas in your life that are generally under your control to improve. If you are willing to put in the necessary time, effort, and commitment and strive for self-improvement. I would also like to add that you should work on your personality and demeanor as well. Uh, something that I also addressed in that video. You should have healthy self-respect, have belief in yourself, possess core values and demonstrate conviction, speak with a rich tone of voice, project yourself, walk with confidence, keep your head up, uh, don't slouch, look people in the eyes when you're talking to them, etc. A strong personality and demeanor are definitely the icing on the proverbial cake of overall attractiveness. But getting back to those first two qualities, let's get down to the nitty gritty. When it comes to income, which falls under the category of resources. To earn in the top 10% in the US, the IRS claims you need to be in a household pulling in at least $295,845 annually. Granted, that's to fit in the top 10% of earners. The top 20% would obviously set the income bar somewhat lower and be relatively easier to obtain. But relatively easier still doesn't mean easy. You're going to have to want it, plan for it, and work for it. And as I mentioned my Attracting Women video, uh, women will take into account your ability to acquire resources like intelligence, marketable talents, uh, education skills, etc. So even if you are not currently a top 20% earner or not even close, possessing traits or factors that'll give you the potential to become one is a plus. Now, let's move along to number two, physical attractiveness. The formula here is simple. Exercise, eat healthfully, and administer proper hygiene. Control what you can and don't stress over what you cannot. Stress certainly isn't helpful or healthful as I've discussed in previous videos on this channel. Do you think Jason Statham's lack of hair or being under six feet tall, for instance, are compromising his social life? He still has status, money, and a Hollywood-style action physique. And he's been dating a model. Like we did with income earlier, let's get a little more specific about fitness, performance, and the physique to help you with perspective in that area as well. 
As I explained in my Truth About Modern Men video from this past April, only 21.7% of U.S. adults actually achieve the basic requirements for exercise, according to the CDC. And basic equates to at least two and a half to five hours of moderate intensity aerobic physical activity over the course of a week, or one and a quarter to two and a half hours of vigorous intensity aerobic physical activity over the course of a week. And that should be combined with at least two sessions of moderate or high intensity strength training each week. And I repeat, only 21.7% of US adults actually achieve those basic guidelines, which means the vast majority, or 78.3% of folks, do not men and women. So if you lift at least twice a week and perform cardio, even just 25 minutes a day, three days a week of cardio that is, you are just about breaking into the top 20% when it comes to physical fitness. And considering that the average untrained man can only squat 125 pounds, bench 135 pounds, and deadlift 155 pounds, if you can do any more than that, you are above average in strength as well. But what qualifies a man for the top 20% in the athletic strength category, uh, which is more specialized arena? Well, that really depends on your strength level in relation to your body weight. If we take into consideration that the average weight for a male today is 195.7 pounds, and that you need to be considered at least advanced by strength standards to fit into the top 20% of lifters, a male of today's average weight would need to bench around 297 to 310 pounds to make the top 20% of benchers, and deadlift around 444 to 462 pounds to make the top 20% of deadlifters, and squat around 388 to 405 pounds to make the top 20% of squatters. And since I personally value the standing overhead press and consider it to be the fourth most important big compound lift, the average man would need to press around 200 to 209 pounds to enter the top 20% for that lift. At the baseline, by just getting slightly more than the recommended physical activity requirements set forth by the government, uh, you're already breaking into the top 20% of men in general from a fitness and health perspective. And if you consistently follow one of my ebooks linked below in the description, you're definitely in that category. As I prescribe uh, three or more lifting days per week, as well as scheduled cardiovascular activity. Athletic strength standards, however, add yet another tier of physical fitness achievements uh, by which to strive for, uh, which my eBooks can also help you achieve, especially the Upgraded Man, which is also linked below, which is more power building in focus. Now, I don't know the accuracy of the following information, uh, as I could not locate the original source to explore in detail, but apparently... Men's Health Magazine had once published data from research that showed that only 10% of men in their 20s can squat over 250 pounds, bench over 170 pounds, and deadlift over 245 pounds. Keep in mind, those numbers are not based on the recognized athletic strength standards that I had mentioned earlier, but rather just men in their 20s, broadly speaking. So even if you don't meet the top 20% of athletic strength standards on some or all of your lifts, uh, you should very well fall into the top 20% of strength compared to your average man, assuming that you lift regularly, intelligently, and progressively, and you push yourself. Keep in mind, when I talk top 20%, I'm comparing to men in general here, not just the rarer breed that are dedicated to the strength game, uh, which are really a subcategory of men. So given what I've discussed in this video, uh, do you fall into the top 20% of men with regards to income, health, fitness, and or strength? Uh, let me know down in the comments. Uh, don't be shy, take pride in yourself, but don't lie to yourself either. Also, let me know if this video has opened your eyes at all. In other words, did you discover something new about yourself uh, with this video that you didn't realize before? Uh, if so, uh, that's the power of perspective. And even if you don't quite match up in one or more of the areas, you should at least have a quantified goal to strive for in bettering yourself. And I don't mean just bettering yourself for a woman, but rather bettering yourself for you first and foremost. because. From there, the rest can follow.
Anyway, let me know what you all think in the comments below. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button and to share it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit that bell button to keep on top of my regular updates. With that, I want to thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video.